This is an introductory tutorial to get an understanding of the term heat content. Uh, sometimes we also call it enthalpy. Uh, consider that uh, you are going to place an apple in a refrigerator and uh, you want to know how much heat will transfer out of that apple when you cool it to the uh, refrigerated temperature. On a larger scale, let's say that you are working uh, with a uh, cold storage. These are large storage buildings where perishable foods are stored and uh, you want to know the refrigeration requirement in cooling apples uh, brought from an orchard and uh, moved into the uh, cold storage. We are going to develop a simple yet very useful equation to determine the heat content of any object. Uh, first we will look at the term energy and, uh, and then we will look more specifically at uh, the heat content or enthalpy. From your course in physics, you'll recall that uh, we encounter energy in many forms. Uh, there is uh, electrical energy uh, that is conveyed uh, from an electric power plant to factories and our homes via electrical cables. Uh, another form of energy is stored, uh, such as chemical energy, uh, that is stored in a substance. Uh, similarly, there is a strain energy that is uh, stored in a spring when you compress it. Uh, heat is a manifestation of energy that is stored in an object. Uh, it's the uh, result of the internal energy due to the activity of atoms. Uh, an object uh, that is heated has a higher activity of atoms and we observe an increase in uh, temperature. Now there are two terms that are often used to describe the heat energy in an object and those are enthalpy and heat content. Let's say that we are interested in finding out the heat content or enthalpy of an apple at room temperature. We will need to know three items to make this estimation. First, we will need to know the mass of that apple. We will represent that with a symbol, a lowercase m, with the units of kilogram. Second, we need to know a property of apple that is called specific heat capacity. Uh, it is represented with a symbol CP with units of joules per kilogram degree C. Third, we will need to know the temperature of that apple represented by symbol T and the units will be degree Celsius. However, since enthalpy or heat content is never an absolute value, uh, you will recall this from your course in physics, instead it is always relative to some reference value. So we use a reference temperature represented by a symbol T reference. Then we will modify our third term as temperature difference represented by a symbol delta T the units of degree C where delta T is T minus T reference. With these three terms we will write a rather simple equation to describe enthalpy or heat content. We will use the symbol uppercase Q for enthalpy. So our equation is Q equals M times specific heat Cp times delta T. Now if we write the units of these three terms we get kilograms 
times joules per kilogram degree C and degree C. Note that kilogram and degree C they will cancel out and that gives us the remaining unit of joule for enthalpy. So the unit of enthalpy or uh, heat content is joules and that is represented by symbol J. Since joule is often a rather small amount it is common to use the term kilojoules or kj. Note that we use small or the lower case k and uh, 1 kilojoule equals 1000 joules. Now we will do an actual calculation. Typical apple weighs approximately 0.15 kilograms. Its uh, temperature let's say is 20 degree Celsius and its uh, specific heat capacity uh, we find out from a textbook and uh, specific heat for apples is uh, 3760 joules per kilogram degree C. We will use a uh, reference temperature of 0 degree C it will make uh, our calculations easy and also quite often for objects above freezing point uh, we use 0 degree C as a reference temperature. Then the enthalpy or heat content of that apple is Q equals 0 0.15 kilograms time 20 minus 0 degree C times 3760 joules per kilogram degree C or Q will equal 11,280 joules and we can also write that as 11.28 kilojoules. This means that for a typical apple at room temperature its heat content is about 11 kilojoules. Again note that we used 0 degree C as the reference temperature. Now enthalpy or heat content gives us important information for an object and we will use this later in uh, studying other topics such as uh, refrigeration. However for many other heat transfer applications we also need to know the rate at which the heat content changes. The rate of change is one of the most important calculations in designing heat transfer equipment. So let's look at one short example of rate of change of heat content. Consider a pipe and let's say we have milk flowing inside this pipe. The mass flow rate of milk in this pipe is 0 0.1 kilograms per second. A note from the units that this is mass flow rate. Kilograms is the mass and of course second is the time. So we have 0.1 kilograms per second the mass flow rate. Milk enters the pipe at 80 degrees C and it leaves the pipe at 60 degrees C. In other words it cools as it flows through this section of the pipe. Note that this pipe is not insulated 
So uh, heat is transferred from, uh, from the inside, from milk, through the pipe material and into the surrounding environment. So the equation to estimate the rate of change of heat content uh, can be developed as follows. We will now use lowercase q as the symbol of rate of change of heat content. Note that this is different from the symbol we use for the heat content which was uppercase q. The equation is actually quite similar to what we had used before. The rate of change for heat content then q, q equals m dot units kilograms per second times Cp, that's the specific heat, units are joules per kilogram degree C times delta T and the units are degree C. Now delta T is the temperature difference between the inlet and the outlet of the pipe. So temperature difference in this case is 80 minus 60 or 20 degree C. Now again if we look up in a textbook we find that the specific heat value for milk is 3830 joules per kilogram degree C. And we earlier noted that the flow rate of milk was denoted by m dot 0 0.1 kilograms per second. So we can go ahead and enter all the values in the equation. So we have lowercase q equals 0 0.1 kilograms per second times 3830 joules per kilogram degree C times 80 minus 60 degree C. This gives us the value for Q as 7660 joules per second. Recall also from physics that 1 joule per second equals 1 watt. So our answer then Q we can also write in terms of watts as 7660 watts. Now you should be careful when you write the units uh, you should always follow the recommended practice of using proper upper or lower case. So watts is always represented by the symbol uppercase W and also note that we earlier used uppercase Q to denote the heat content and lowercase Q to denote the rate of change of heat content. So to recap our discussion heat content of an object can be estimated by knowing the mass, the specific heat capacity and the temperature difference from the reference temperature. 